Good evening and welcome to our the launch of our newest syndication, Wild Pine San Antonio LLC. We're very excited. We had a huge response to this and I, don't, I can see why. Uh, we have such a great team there in the San Antonio market already. And that is supposedly the hottest market in the country, at least according to uh, the census is fastest growing. So thank you for being here. We will be recording this if you can't stay the whole time or if you want to hear it a second time. Um, but we'll be talking about the latest syndication offering, new construction build to rent community in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, San Antonio has been one of the most popular markets in the Real Wealth Network. So uh, there was, uh, it just made sense to be able to start doing build to rent in that area. Um, it can be, it can be a great option for people who are just looking for a completely passive investment, or maybe they just don't have the full down payment or don't don't want to. There we go, it's working. All right, so uh, these are some pretty hefty disclaimers, so I'm not gonna read it, uh, but you can read it later in the recording. Uh, the bottom line is, you know, with syndications, we are putting in our best effort for projections and um, and yet life can happen. There's always things can, that can happen in the economy. So it is our best projections. And today is not, uh, we're not selling securities. We are doing a presentation on uh, on our syndication, but the security uh, is, you, you, <clears throat> the actual sale happens to the PPM and the operating agreement if you decide you want to invest. Once again, I'm just not gonna read all of this. It's a lot of words, but it will all be, in the PPM to make sure that you really understand what you're getting into. This this is not for everyone. In fact, um, it is for accredited investors only. So the overview, number one, about uh, we'll talk about the managers. The number two, the market overview, business summary plan, the offering summary, risk, the risks, the fees, tax considerations, how to invest, and the Q and A. And so, um, and I do want to let you know that this offering is for accredited investors only. We have a lot of people asking why a lot of non-accredited investors would like to invest in one of our syndications. And the way that we have filed it is a 506C, which means that we can talk about it publicly, but only people who are accredited can invest. If we were to allow accredited investors in, it would have, we'd have to wait a year because uh, you know, at least that's what we're being told by our attorney because we have been public and then to go back to private pl placements, there's kind of a time period that you have to wait. So right now, accredited investors only means that you either have a net worth over $1 million, excluding your primary residence, um, individually or with your spouse or partner, or you only have to meet one of these three criteria, or you have an income over $200,000 if you're not married or $300,000 if you are in each of the prior two years and, and that you reasonably expect the same for this year, or that you're an investment professional in good standing holding the general securities uh, license of series seven, series 65 or series 82. So that may be one of the best ways to become accredited is go past one of these tests. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about who we are. Um, I'm Kathy Fedke. And you probably know me from The Real Wealth Show. I'm the manager of Real Wealth Developments, which is our syndication department of Real Wealth. I've been an investor for more than 25 years. Wow, that sounds like a long time. <laughs> Amazing how time flies. I'm the co-founder of Real Wealth. Uh, we have over 75,000 members today. I'm the host of The Real Wealth Show and Real Estate News for Investors and author of Retire Rich with Rentals and our new book, Scaling Smart. Um, as you know, I've been... Um, my background is in, in the media, and I've been a frequent guest expert on big stations like CNN, CNBC, Fox, Bloomberg, CBS, and ABC News. And I was named among one of the top most intriguing entrepreneurs by Goldman Sachs during the foreclosure crisis uh, for helping to uh, bring those neighborhoods back to their former condition. And many of you know Clay Schlinke and the Schlinke family, Invest5S. We've been working with them for a while. Welcome, Clay. Oh, thank you, Kathy. I'm excited to be here. And you've been so building... Little... Oh, Yes, a little bit about myself, though. I've been in real estate since... Uh, I always tell people I'm going to age myself since 1994. And um, I've been in San Antonio since then as well. And 
been in the you know real estate game for a long time, initially buying and flipping houses and then started building in 1999 and started building duplexes and fourplexes in about 2002 is when we really got into that that niche and we've been in that since since 2002 so over over 20 years building just duplexes and fourplexes and um, family business i know a lot of people that probably have on here like you said they've they've met us at some point in a in a webinar but one thing about us probably most the thing i'm most proud about is we're you know, definitely a family business. My wife works with us and runs our property management company. Uh, both my sons are in the business. My daughter-in-law is our sales manager. And then my daughter's in college currently, but she'll be joining us at some point when she graduates. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, you could either be a blessing or a curse to have your family working together, but in your case, it yeah. looks like a blessing. <laughs> it's a blessing. It's not always easy. I'm not going to lie. It's it's sometimes it's we butt heads a little bit, but uh, we we've kind of always talked. And I said, look, this is you know we 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 do a real good job of separating you know work from family. So love that. Whoops. Okay. Um. And then yeah, a little bit more about your company. Yeah. Yeah. So Invest 5S. Uh, we you know we started building initially duplexes, fourplexes, and realized quickly that it's almost impossible to find developed lots. So we really started developing our own subdivisions and that's what we do currently. So my older son's our land acquisition director, Tyler. Um, he will find the land and identify the locations based on certain criteria we have based on you know, schools, um, restaurants, shopping, um, work, you know, all these different factors that we wanna make sure is within a you know, certain minute drive from the location. And if uh, the property, you know, checks all the boxes, then we'll we'll move forward with the purchase and develop it. And that's uh, how we've developed, you know, between four and five thousand lots already, and build the product and build approximately 500 units a year right now. And I'm expecting to do 750 next year and continue growing. And Paul, we don't have a slide for you. We need a slide for you. <laughs> Yeah, Paul is our, yeah, he's our syndication manager. We, we dug uh, deep to find him. We had over 2,000 applicants. He was by far the most suited, suited for it. I, I sent a, a deal that I knew wouldn't be, wasn't that great. And a lot of people uh, underwrote it saying it was, and he came back with the pages and pages of why it wasn't. That's what I wanted. I wanted somebody really conservative that wasn't just going to be a yes person. So Paul, yeah, if you'll just give a little background on, on you. Yeah. Uh, real quick, thanks. Yeah, I joined Real Wealth in March. I've been in real estate uh, for over 15 years now uh, from Northeast Ohio, but live in uh, actually Miami, Florida now. Uh, but worked at one of the larger firms, Cushman and Wakefield uh, on the brokerage side. And then I worked for a multifamily developer uh, where we build class A multifamily. And my job there, uh, similar to what I'm doing at Real Wealth, is just finding the project and taking it from start to finish. Um, so yeah, excited about to be be here and um, excited to meet a lot of the Real Wealth members. Great. Okay, so the investment highlights are, it's a it's a small build to rent community, 56 units, 28 duplexes. Of course, easy for me to say because I won't be <laughs> holding the hammer, but um, it's a build to rent community in San Antonio in one of the fastest growing parts, uh, which we'll talk about in a bit. It's built and managed by an experienced real wealth property team, as you see. Um, an annual 12% preferred return is what we are offering, and then a 50% pro rata profit split with investors. This is a little different than you'll see with other syndications that are usually a lower preferred return and a higher profit split. But just years ago, I just thought, wow, you know, the investors really should get their money back first and a big return before there's any split of profits. And so we kind of front load it for the investor to get that 12% pref. That is not an interest rate. It's really important to understand what a preferred return is. It basically means as cash flows come, as profits come through, um, first it goes to, when we have a slide for this, but first it goes to investors and then a 12% return on that invested capital uh, per annum until, until um, that is paid and then 50% profit split after that. Uh, all right, so then 100% of available 
distributable cash goes to investors. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Until they've received an amount equal to their adjusted capital contributions and their preferred return. We plan, we are estimating this will be a five to six year hold with a sale in year five or six when the project is fully stabilized. And again, this conversation came when I was like, Clay, aren't you so tired of building these homes and selling them and watching all the investors make money on the appreciation? Don't you want to hold some of these? He's like, yeah. I said, okay, let's let's uh, do a build to rent fund because there's so much growth happening. I can't even imagine what the area will be like in five to six years. Yeah. So, and then a min minimum investment of $50,000, it's a 506C offering, which is why we can only allow a accredited investors in. It is the SEC law and not something I came up with. I'd love for everyone to be able to invest. All right, so let's talk about why San Antonio. So let's bring the expert. I Which one is, oh, the cowboy hat, yes. Cowboy, yeah, yeah, I can, I can talk about San Antonio and Texas. So, I mean, probably everyone's, you know, you're very familiar with Texas and you're familiar with the, the amount of growth we've had over the years. Texas is a very pro-business state. Um, no state income tax, uh, very, you know, landlord friendly state. So a lot of positives in that aspect. Um, Texas Triangle, if you haven't heard of that, that is basically San Antonio, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin's involved in it, and then all the cities within that. But it is, as far as an economic boom, it's that's what the, the Texas Triangle is. So it's a, we're actually ranked the I think it was the eighth largest economy in the world, I believe is what it's ranked. That, the, it's wow. right in the top, it's right up there. So it's it's tremendous as far as GDP. Um, so it's uh, home to 53 of the state's 54 Fortune 500 companies. And it's projected growth is right now 21 point, it's actually already 21 million. So we need to update the slide. It's actually already 21 million they're projecting it to be um, 40 million by 2040 is wow. the projection. So it's a tremendous amount of growth still happening in Texas just because of the, the pro business and, and you know the cost of housing is low as well compared to other cities and the no state income tax. So that's really what's pushing the growth in Texas. Plus, you know, the benefit of Texas is, is you know, we've got the Gulf, so we have shipping, we, border Mexico, so we have all of that trade. So location-wise, it's, you know, it's perfect. And San Antonio, we'll talk more about San Antonio in just a second, but San Antonio really takes advantage of, of its location in, not only in the nation, but in the state of Texas. Okay. So San Antonio. So San Antonio is, a lot, a lot of people don't realize this. So San Antonio is known as Military City USA. Um, we have four military bases in San Antonio. We've got uh, Randolph Air Force Base. We've got Fort Sam Houston. We've got Lackland Air Force Base, and we have Camp Bullis. So they are, you know, San Antonio, I like to tell people, this is kind of, I'm kind of going off script probably a little bit off the slide. I'll let people read and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about why San Antonio. Um, you know, San Antonio, as far as a city in Texas, a lot of people ask why San Antonio, because they've heard of, Austin, they've heard of Houston, they've heard of Dallas. San Antonio is really kind of a quiet city, but it's a booming city. And I tell people, you know, Houston is very well known for the oil business. Um, Austin is very well known for high tech. San Antonio, what I like about San Antonio and really am bullish on San Antonio is because that military base that I spoke about early, that gives us a consistent base of growth. You know, it's continued growth year in and year out, and it gives us that stability with the military. But then San Antonio's location, um, right off Interstate 35 and Interstate 10, so you have all of the traffic coming from Mexico for trade, it all comes into San Antonio. So San Antonio has huge distribution centers, um, great railway as well, um, but they'll come into San Antonio and then it can go you know, east to, to Florida, it goes west to California, it goes north to Canada. So. San Antonio really takes advantage of its location being um, such great, you know, close proximity to Mexico and with trade and distribution centers, manufacturing jobs, all of that really um, just pushes that rental demand. Okay. 
So San Antonio, so San Antonio is, uh, people don't realize this, you know, it's 2.6 million. Um, they are projecting it to be 4 million in by 2040. So it's still got tremendous growth. Um, was declared fastest growing city in this past year, 22,000 people, you know, added to the population. Um, and they're, they are expected to double population by 2040. Unemployment is one of the lowest in the state as well, which is going to translate to one of the lowest in the nation. And this is a, a neat fact that we, we learned recently. So San Antonio led the entire nation in domestic migration. So what that means is people moving from all over the United States, San Antonio was the fastest growing city and took advantage of more people moving to San Antonio than other any other city in the in the United States. So that's a you know just really talks about the strength of San Antonio um, with its housing, with its jobs, with you know everything in San Antonio. Just people are moving to San Antonio, which is great for us. Yep. And housing trends. I talked about it just briefly. The so median homes. You know, housing prices is really competitive compared to other states. Um, so, and you know, of course, compared to California, it's it's ridiculous the the prices in San Antonio and in Texas. You know, compared to, to California and some of the other West Coast states. Um, appreciation. So, San Antonio. What I tell people, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, what's the appreciation in San Antonio and I explained to him that San Antonio, if you really looked at historically over like a 30 year period, you're gonna see on average about 6% annually. So it's a very steady appreciation. You're not gonna normally see huge skyrocketing appreciation like Austin sometimes will get, but you also don't really see any depreciation, which Austin realizes as well. So San Antonio is just a very stable market that's gonna give you that consistency um, and just year in and year out appreciation. And then rent growth as well. Rent growth has been very steady. Um, it's gone down a little bit this year just with the economy, but um, the neighborhood we're in is, is we're excited about the location and, and uh, you know, as the economy changes a little bit, hopefully in the near term, then uh, we'll see that uh, rent growth pick back up again. Okay. Yeah. Paul, and you want to go talk about yeah, the business sure. plan? Our business plan. Uh, so the plan is to acquire the 9.6 acres of commercially approved land for 1.5 million. Uh, Invest 5S has it under contract now, and currently that closing date is October 18th. Uh, so we are looking to move on this as soon as possible. Uh, the land is under contract with Invest 5S, and they will sign over. Uh, an assignment agreement, and we could begin the project um, as soon as we close on the land and construction finance is in place. We do have a non-binding term sheet in place with an affiliated our lender of Clays um, that we are working on, and that will be the lender for the project. Uh, we anticipate to build, uh, again, 56 units. So this will be done basically in three phases. One is all the site work, and then two phases of vertical development uh, so we'll build 14 duplexes at once, start the leasing, and then the other 14 duplexes. Um, so we're estimating about a dollar 52 square feet, uh, which is in line with comps in the area. Uh, they're anywhere from $1.49 to $1.79 per square feet. Um, and those are comps as of today. Hopefully, again, as Clay mentioned, we'll see some appreciation in the rental comps uh, that we're really not taking in consideration yet. Uh, so we're playing it very conservative. Uh, once the construction is completely done and the co and the property is leased, we will then move to refinance the construction loan and we will go to long-term debt. Uh, the plan is through our banking lending contacts to negotiate the best deal. You know, we'll look at regional bank, national banks, insurance company, or Freddie and Fannie Mac uh, lenders. Uh, once we then refinance the deal, uh, we will hold it for a year, uh, showing buyers, you know, a full year of income coming in and expenses. And then the plan would be the sell in year five or six, just depending on uh, when we anticipate the right timing is. 
the goal of this is sell this to a bulk portfolio uh, at a cap rate of 5.15, targeting sort of larger institutional buyers or real estate companies uh, that will buy it at a lower cap rate than uh, an individual would buy, you know, a single unit at or a duplex at. Okay. So the property, yeah, yeah, yeah the property is, uh, as the Paul mentioned, 9.6 acres. It's uh, located on Wild Pine, which Wild Pine is northwest San Antonio. You can kind of see on the, the map up at the top right with a little blue, uh, I guess, diamond shape there. So it's about a 20 minute, uh, about 20 miles from downtown. So San Antonio roadway is phenomenal compared to other cities. We've got two different loops, loop 410 and loop 1604. So you can really go anywhere around San Antonio. You can go from the Northwest all the way to the Northeast within 30 minutes. So to go downtown from this location would be about a 20 minute drive. Um, but most of the jobs, everything's gonna be, people that are gonna live in that area are gonna be working in that kind of area close to the, the location um, off of Interstate 10, 1604. Um, so about a 10 to 15 minute drive to work for most people. Um, that area, all new within the last several years, it's been really the fastest growing area of San Antonio. And in fact, uh, one of the zip codes right next to where this location is, is the one of the top um, 10 fastest growing zip codes in the, in the entire United States. So that's exciting for us. Uh, a lot of jobs in the area. There's a Texas Medical Center, which is where all the hospitals are. Um, Lackland Air Force Base is about a 15 minute drive from here. You've got the University of Texas San Antonio, which is our um, one of our larger universities. And you've got uh, a lot of headquarters, Valero's headquarters, uh, USAA, which is kind of the financial insurance giant that uh, serves the military. They're very close as well. Um, so, you know, huge, huge, just ton of growth in this area. So that's, that's really what we're excited about, as well as being only about a 10 minute, actually, about a five minute drive to loop 1604, if even that, I mean, it's, uh, you can see it's right off of loop 1604. So they're able to, to jump on 1604 and go anywhere around the city within minutes. Whoop. Yep, so this is the location. You can see um, beautiful houses adjacent to it. There's uh, newer apartments as well. There's a, an apartment, you know, on the north side and then we'll have another picture it kind of shows a south view and there's another apartment complex across the street as well which we really like i've, I've told kathy this when we we met and we actually toured the property is i love being close to apartment complexes because you know they bring in a lot of traffic um of course with their marketing and it's very easy for us to really take their tenants and prospective tenants and turn them into our tenants because our product's a two-story um, three bedroom, two and a half bath with a two car garage. And it really, you know, for someone in an apartment, it, this is the next best, next spot, you know, the next place they're going to move into before they really look to purchase a house at some point in their life, potentially. But it's very easy for us to take those tenants away just because we, you know, we do with us, you have no one living above you or below you. You've got a garage, you've got a backyard for pets or for your children. Um, so it's a, a great opportunity for us to, to be in this location. And really, it's the, the last piece of land in this vicinity. So we're able to pick that up. And I was really impressed with the, qual <clears throat> excuse me, the quality of the neighborhood. It seemed like an A-class neighborhood from, I mean, the homes next door, about how much do they sell for? Um, they're going to be probably about three fifty to 400000 And so, you know, when, you know, people in California might hear that and be like, what, what kind of house are you buying? But it's it's actually in, in San Antonio, that's a really nice house um, with our median, you know, being, you know, high 200. So this is going to be a, a little upper end neighborhood. Um, so it's a, it's a great location. Yeah. Yeah. I really was impressed with it. Okay. All right. Why build to rent? Oh, that's me. <laughs> um, so I I love, I got started in real estate investing, buying new properties. We've been helping people do it for years. And when we did our, our fund where we had older homes in, you know, kind of Detroit, Cleveland area. Um, and then we also bought in newer homes in Florida and Georgia. 
the newer homes did pretty much at like a 28% IRR within the fund and the older homes in the areas that weren't growing as quickly had about an 8% return overall per year during the life of the fund. So that's just kind of an example of why I love newer builds. Uh, one of the things that I think really, you know, one of the reasons I've been wanting to do it for a while is the reason institutional investors are wanting to do it. You've got the cost savings and quality. It's like an apartment, but it's a, it's a horizontal apartment. It's all being managed by one manager. Um, lower vacancy rates, diverse tenant base, potential for appreciation, positive cash flow. A lot of our other development deals, we've just been selling retail, but this we're, we're renting them as soon as they're built. So there'll be cash flow along the way. Um, straightforward maintenance and management because you know, you're gonna probably have the same paint color, same floors, so a lot easier to, to do the maintenance on these. Plus they're new and then the tax benefits flow through. Yeah, All right. So uh, the product type, um, this is kind of a artist rendition of uh, a, one of the duplexes. It'll be very similar to something like this. Um, three bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage, about 1,350 to 1,400 square feet. Um, each unit will have its own private backyard. Uh, what we're doing is uh, luxury vinyl plank downstairs, carpet upstairs. Of course, we're doing stainless steel appliances. We want to, you know, really dress it up nice. And we do granite granite countertops we might do quartz that's something that's you know we'll kind of look at and and decide when we get a little closer but we'll do one of the one of the two we are doing technology packages which includes a smart thermostat keyless door entry and a hub panel so the tenant can add um, an alarm system if they choose to different things um, onto those you know the act with that hub panel gives them a lot of a lot of available you know opportunity to do different things um, Siding is going to be hardy concrete siding. Um, of course, we engineer all of our slabs and roofs, 25 year composition shingle, and everything's turnkey. So, you know, this will be built with, um, like I said, all appliances, mini blinds, garage door opener. So, once we finish each duplex, it'll be 100% rent ready for our tenants to start moving in. Great. Whoop, keep skipping ahead. There we go. Yeah, that's kind of just sample photos of uh, another development. That's only a one-car garage product, but uh, you know, has the luxury vinyl plank downstairs, carpet, kind of shows us stainless steel appliances, white cabinets, um, and and the granite countertops that I was talking about, and shows a nice size backyard. So you know, plenty of room for a pet, for a child, for you know, have a barbecue pit, and you know, for people to really, really you know, have a family and feel like a like a home. Yeah, this is just a high level uh, overview of the timeline. Um, I was saying Q4 right now, as I said, the goal is to close on the land October 18th, and then we will work on closing on the construction loan right after that. As soon as we close on the construction loan, uh, we could get moving at the start of Q1 on all the site work, uh, prep work, permits, et cetera. Uh, that site work you know, will take around 16 months. Uh, we will then begin the vertical uh, construction, again, doing the two phases, the 14 and 14, building them in two phases. And then in Q3, uh, once the property is fully stabilized, that will be around month 40. Uh, we will refinance the perm debt and then hold it for about another year or two and then sell the property. Okay. Uh, so the offering details, as I said, accredited investors only with third-party verification. That's what's required for a 506C filing. That would be with your CPA, your attorney, financial planner, or verifyinvestor.com. You can get those details on the, on, the, on our page. Um, this is Class A1 members would be U.S., Class A2 non-U.S. IRA investors are accepted. Uh, minimum investment is $50,000 with a minimum funding amount of $1.5 million, which is why I, I don't have any concern that there'll be enough interest for that uh, with the deadline of October 15th. Um, if, if for some reason people can't get their money in on time, it could be extended, but we don't want to have to do that because there's always, it's complicated. So we think that we'll, we already have seen enough interest here that we'll make, we'll make that minimum. 
uh, maximum funding amount 3.6 million or 3,600 units with a deadline of January 31st, uh, which can be extended 60 days by the manager. Total fund uses for land and closing. Let's see. Yeah, uh, 1.9 million hard costs, 7.8 million soft costs, 479. Contingency, 590,000, financing, 1.6 million. I'm rounding off here with total project costs, 12.5 million. All right, Paul? Yeah, with investment highlights, uh, we're giving you both uh, the deal uh, highlights and the investor highlights. Obviously, the deal highlights includes both uh, the sponsors uh, returns and the investor returns. Uh, so the lower projections are just the investor returns. Uh, a few things just to point out, you know, the IRR is uh, important uh, compared to the equity multiplier or the ROI. The IRR takes into consideration the time value of money. So it's the annual rate of return over the entire period, whole period. So this would be over that five or six years. Uh, so very strong returns, 16.12. Our equity multiplier, which is the cash distribution um, divided by the total amount of uh, total project costs, uh, that is around 1.96. And you always want the equity multiplier to be obviously above one. Um, that's sort of the trust trust hold. If it's below one, obviously then you're losing money. And then your return on investment is very strong 19.13 uh that's just obviously showing you the profitability of the investment uh, as it relates to the total cost of the project and then the investor profits uh total that 50 percent per rata profit share will be around 3.4 uh, million uh, we also did an example of if you invest 50,000, uh breaking down your preferred return uh the 50 percent profit share uh, for a total distribution of 97,836 uh, minus your 50,000 you put in, so a net cash flow of 47,836. So uh, very strong returns, um, you know, in a great market. Uh, just going over the financing assumptions, uh, the construction loan, as I mentioned, we do have a loan term sheet out right now with. Uh, First Bank Southwest, which is out of San Antonio. Uh, basically, what we'll be looking for is the term length will be 36 months. Uh, so that will give us time to complete all the construction. It's in construction loans are interest only. So that's all IO. Uh, the LTV is the loan to value. Uh, so we're going to try to target uh, a loan to value of above 71.2, which the term sheet we have in place is already above that, which is good, meaning less equity we will needs, need. Uh, so based on a 12.5 million total project cost that would and a loan to value of 71.2, that loan amount is around 8.9 million. Uh, you know, we are looking at a prefer a fixed rate, but there is a variable rate on the table that we may consider. And the interest rate uh, for our pro forma, we estimated it at 9.25. Uh, but with the Fed's lowering rates the other day, that uh, definitely we're looking like it'll be below that rate uh, that we are performing um, right now. For the refinance, this will be in month 40. Uh, so we will go again, probably look to do a Freddie or Fannie loan since they could go out to 30 years. Uh, so we'll look at potentially a 36, 30 year amortization. Uh, if we could get some additional IO since we are going to sell the property uh, that only benefits us it will keep returns up that year or two that we hold it uh, again the loan to value for this on a refinance uh, would be around 70 percent uh, so basically we will pay off the construction loan and then uh, we essentially anticipate having some uh, money to disperse at refinance uh, we are right now anticipating a six percent interest rate is what we perform on. Um, and it's based off a cap rate of 5.25 um, would be the appraisal cap rate that we're using uh, to the, do the underwriting. Uh, going into this is sales and exit assumptions. Again, if you remember Kathy mentioned uh, the total project cost was 12.5 million. 
our gold um, through leasing it up and appreciation over the years. Uh, the gold would be to sell it at around eight, 18.2 million. Uh, so this is just a breakdown per sale unit. That'll be 325,371. Uh, the cost of sale is just all your closing costs. If we have to pay a real estate commission, uh, just an estimate around 3%. Uh, to come up with that price, we are using an exit um, NOI value of 938,000. So our NOI at the end of year five will be around 938,000. And using a 5.15 cap rate, uh, that will put you at that 18.2 million uh, valuation. And again, it will be in that year five or month six or year six. We go. And then just your annual investor returns, as um, we mentioned, there will be positive uh, cash flow. Uh, you know, year one and two, it's mostly all construction. Uh, we do get a little return in year two. Uh, year three, just to point out, we're only around 70% occupied, uh, which is why your gross rents are still a little lower. And then in year four and five is when you're uh, fully occupied. So you have your potential gross rents, uh, your other income is like pet fees, uh, late fees, um, application fees, uh, just adding a, some additional income. So your overall effective gross income is around that 1.3. And then we have the total operating yearly operating ex expenses uh, for both the years. Uh, and then you have a net income uh, at the year at the very bottom. Uh, you'll see where year five's at. All right, so for distributions, as I mentioned earlier, first funds out go to Class A members to receive the amount equal to the Class A members adjusted capital contribution pro rata based on the Class A partnership interest until each Class A members adjusted capital contribution has been reduced to zero. Um, next, money out will be receiving that 12% preferred return pro rata based on the total accrued preferred return uh, it shall be calculated starting on the ladder of either initial closing or the date of Class A member is, ex is accepted as a member and shall be calculated on the Class A member's adjusted capital contribution at the simple annual rate of 12% per annum non-compounding. And finally, the remaining profits to be distributed at 50% of remaining company profits to Class A members pro rata based on their Class A percentage interests or B, 19% to focused real estate holdings, and C, 31% to invest 5S. All distributions are made at the manager's sole discretion after payment of com company expenses, fees, and allowing for any reasonable reserves. All of this is in the private placement memorandum. The manager expects to provide quarterly distributions once the homes are rented and fully stabilized uh, of the project, uh, yeah, of when that's achieved, which is anticipated to begin after month 26. Additional distributions may be available upon a refinance of the property, which is anticipated to occur between year three and four. The company may be required to withhold certain federal or state taxes on behalf of certain members, including foreign withholding tax. In the event of said withholdings, the company will deduct these amounts from any distribution owed to said member. If there are ins insufficient distributions, the member will be required to reimburse the company upon request. You can tell this is written by our attorney. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so the fees, really important to understand the fees. Uh, the manager and founding members, Real Wealth Developments and Invest 5S will be reimbursed for all expenses, including professional fees in incurred in connection with formation and organization of the company and preparing the private placement memorandum. This will include legal fees and consultant fees related to the offering material and related to the underlying real estate transaction, due diligence, and formation of the entities. Asset management fee, the manager shall receive a monthly fee of $6,000 starting as of the date of the initial closing for asset management. It's anticipated that the company will draw this amount from the construction loan. Then there's the acquisition due diligence fee. At any time during the initial closing, the company will make a one-time payment of $250,000 to the manager as a due diligence fee for securing the land and conducting due diligence related to the acquisition. Then the finance fee upon, upon any financing or refinancing, including the initial construction loan and any re refinancing of the construction loan to perm debt, 
the manager shall receive a fee of half a percent, half a point of the principal loan amount. Loan guarantee fee, in the event that the manager or any affiliate of the manager provides a guarantee for any financing obtained by the company, that party shall receive a guarantee fee in the amount of half a percent of the pr principal loan amount. And disposition fee, upon any sale of one or more of the rental homes owned by the company, the manager shall receive a fee equal to 2% of the sale price of the home upon closing of the sale. Uh, and then Real Wealth Developments shall receive a fee of $1,000 to process each subscription agreement. Focused Real Estate Investor Holdings LLC will receive a 19% carried interest profit share. Invest 5S LLC will receive 31% carried interest profit share. Property management and leasing fee. The company will enter into a property management agreement with Turnkey Rentals LLC to manage the property as the units are completed and ready to lease. It's anticipated that the property manager will receive an amount not to exceed 6% of gross rental income payable monthly as a property management fee. Additionally, the property manager may also receive an amount up to, an, up to equal to one month of rent for placing every new tenant. Then there's a builder fee. Invest 5S will uh, oversee the construction of the property and will receive a fee equal to 5% of the total hard construction cost anticipated not to exceed $12,500 per duplex. It's anticipated that the company will pay this fee from a draw of the construction loan. The builder fee will be payable by the company upon completion of each duplex so long as Invest 5S has not been removed or terminated as the builder. And Invest 5S will receive a 4% real estate commission on the acquisition price of the property for serving as real estate agents acquiring closes on the property. In the event Invest 5S LLC closes on the property before the initial close date, then Invest 5S LLC will transfer the property to the company when it hits the minimum offering amount and the initial closing occurs, at which time Invest 5S LLC will receive an assignment fee instead of the real estate commission in the amount of 4% of the acquisition price of the property. You're all still here, yay, <laughs> a mouthful. Mm. Okay, the uh, risks. There's always risk in every every uh, venture, but the, purpose, the purchase of the membership units involves a high degree of risk to the prospective investor, including certain risks related to regulatory, operating tax and investment matters prospective investors for membership interest in the company should give careful consideration to the following risk factors uh worldwide pandemic let's hope that is not a risk uh real estate risk uh build to rent risk operating risk securities risk special risk of the company uh form and membership units task tax risk please consult risk factors in the pvm for the detail list we do feel that we've uh, uh, reduced a lot of the risk, uh, partly because Invest 5S has been investing or has been developing and building in uh, the San Antonio area for a while now. It's a good, yeah. great track record. Thank you. Okay. Reporting. The company will provide regular reporting to the investor members to keep them apprised of the performance of the investments. Information to be provided include quarterly reports outlining business activities, investment purchases and sales, refinancing, or other financial data related to the company. Key information about assets under management, status of construction, and leasing activity. Accrued or paid fees, current or total equity raised to date for the company, and status on continuing efforts regarding total company capital. Quarterly unaudited financial statements, information reasonably necessary for the preparation of income tax returns annually including schedule k1s financial statements upon request okay so if you have not uh invested in a syndication before you have ann triplett and kathy mcbride uh, to help you with that both um, if you've been with Real Wealth, you know them both. They've been with us for a very long time. Um, they've invested in some of our, many of our deals, and they can walk you through the process of filling out that subscription agreement and, um, you know, just the, the whole process. So you can review the offering documents with legal and tax advisors. We highly recommend that. You can find the documents at realwealth.com forward slash wildpine. And then if you have questions, you can send them to syndications at Real Wealth. 
just follow instructions on the InvestNext portal. Uh, Third-party verification of uh, accreditation will be required, as I mentioned earlier, and you can do that through verifyinvestor.com or, like I said, a third party. Um, space is limited. This one is going to, I'm just guessing, I don't have a crystal ball, but I'm guessing this one is going to fill up very quickly. So it's a small raise. First come, first serve based on ability to fund and provide accreditation verification. Okay, so let's see if there's some questions. Uh, somebody could not hear, but it looks like they got in. Uh, the 12% uh, preferred return is non-compounding. It does not compound. Uh, please explain more on the 12% preferred return and how the payout schedule is. Does it start year one after you get the money or start after you have the units rented? Well, first we got to build them, right? I've got to build them and then rent them um, as cash flow comes in. Then first, first cash flow goes to pay the capital back, then the preferred return, and then the profit split. Anything you guys want to add to that? No, we covered it in the distribution, and it'll start around month 26. I think someone said, uh, we answered this, but does the business plan include a loan? Yes, it does. This does matter if you're investing with your IRA because it could create UBIT, unrelated business income tax, in your um, IRA. So definitely, as we said, bring the documents to your CPA. However you use your funds, it may be affected differently and you really want to be sure that you understand that. So yes, we will be getting financing. Uh, uh, why don't you take in more funds from investors so you can borrow less because it is cheaper money to borrow? Um, but it is a great question. But this is this is the way we made the numbers work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then the question: Why take in only one and a half million from investors and borrow nine million? Paul, you want to answer that one? Yeah, we're not um, taking. The 1.45 will cover the land cost. Uh, so in a construction loan, you could roll your land equity into the loan. So then we'll roll that 1.45 million basically as equity into the deal. So the lender is going to make us put down 75% of whatever the final construction uh, approved cost is. So we're not 100% sure if they'll approve all the fees, if they're approved interest reserve. Um, so basically, uh, if they, if it's 75% of 12.5 million, you know, we might only need about three or 3.1 million, uh, if they approve all the, all the fees, if the fees or the interest reserves, if they don't, then we'll need the full 3.6 million dollars. Um, what if the exit cap is higher? If the exit cap is higher, uh, you know, it will affect the value. Uh, you know, we did run comps in the area right now, uh, you know, and they're looking at anywhere from 4.7 uh, rate uh, all the way up to that 5.25. And again, this is five years down down the road. So again, we're just anticipating what it is based on today's market. Uh, but we feel very comfortable uh, with a newer product like this uh, in this area that we could target that cap rate. Yeah. And you know, if, if it's not a great time to sell, we won't, we'll just continue to rent them. Right. And then um, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but like in the, in this case, let's just say there isn't a buyer for the entire community we could sell these units off one off, right? Exactly. Correct. Yeah, that's the that's a beautiful thing about kind of what we do. You know, you really can operate it as a build to rent community. It's like an apartment complex, but you know, we can really that's something we can look at and, and you know you might be able to sell them off to be honest individually for more money than a bulk sale even. Um, of course to generate even more profits. Yeah, so we'll we'll have more options. It doesn't have to be one buyer. Okay. When will K-1 statements be sent out each year to preparing uh, to 
for the tax returns. Uh, so we're going to engage a third party uh, hall who we've used on some other projects. Uh, but again, the, the goal is to get them out as soon as possible, but uh, different uh, things or items, issues occur. Uh, so our goal obviously is to get them done on time, but as you know, uh, sometimes they do get delayed, um, the K-1s. Yeah, when you're investing in syndications, it's just better to file an extension because they, you know, they're, they're not possibly going to come in time for the April filing. Uh, how is the property insured? For example, is each property covered by some equivalent of homeowner's warranty? Right, so initially during the building process, we'll have general, general liability insurance for the project as a, as a whole, and then we'll have builder's risk coverage as well, which gives us that protection when we're building if there's any kind of uh, you know theft or damages, anything like that is covered through the builder's risk insurance. Once we complete construction, then that would roll into you know a just insurance policy that we would have for the entire project, similar to homeowners insurance. If the preferred return is the preferred return twelve percent or twelve and a half percent? Twelve percent. Twelve percent. Yeah, I think this person is maybe thinking of Klamath Falls is twelve and a half. I think. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. And there are still, you know, that's still an offering that we have that'll be closing soon. Um, Clay mentioned engineered slabs being used in construction. Does that imply protections for settling or other foundation property issues? Have nearby properties been examined for similar issues? Yeah, no issues at all in that area. We just, as a business practice, we always design our slabs, you know, for each lot. And we always, when we build it, we have it inspected by the engineer, just simply more for us as a safety precaution. Um, I think it's a good business practice. That's what we do really. And um, we've never had an issue with the foundation, knock on wood here, but never had an issue with the foundation in my building, entire building time. So, which is, which is good. So that's something we're proud of. How far is the nearby new development within the past two to three years? Um, minutes. I mean, the whole area is, there's new development in the entire area. So you could go three minutes down the road and you're going to hit, you know, new subdivisions. You're going to hit new retail, new uh, restaurants. Uh, you know, everything is just, is it's, it's evolving that whole area quickly. It's just a typical Texan suburb that's all brand new. <laughs> It was yeah, it, fields. <laughs> right, it really is. Um, oh, yes, it is okay to invest with your self-directed IRA, but please speak with your CPA to make sure that you're not paying taxes within your IRA. Has the San Antonio team done similar syndications in the past? So we have not done any syndications ourselves. We've uh, we've kind of financed the, our projects differently, and we've never done a project where we've um, been a partner to hold it for long term. We've always developed, built, and sold immediately. So this is something where you know we we've looked at the market and and we've you know discussing with with Kathy and realized you know what we're we're selling our product and then uh, you know there's great returns for our investors which we're happy about and we want to keep providing those returns for our investors that buy from us. But this is something we want to partake in the in those profits, I guess. Yeah. So we bring this syndication experience at Real Wealth. Uh, let's see. What is the natural disaster risk in the area? So San Antonio is very unique in that its location in Texas. So we're we're far enough from the coast. We really have no hurricanes. Um, we really do not have tornadoes like North Texas does, just simply because we've got a lot of mountains north of us, kind of break up that wind and break up the possibility of tornadoes um, so and there's not gonna be any flooding in the area there's no flood zone on the property um, so really the only thing that could be would be some hail um, that I mean happens very very occasionally I mean it's not something that that happens often at all in San Antonio and I think a lot of that is just because of its location with uh, 
with the mountains that give us that, that protection from the north wind. Okay. Are there any expectations for the land deal to close contributions, money, or construction to enhance amenities? I'm not super clear on that question. Are you? No. Okay. okay. Right. If you could rewrite Unless that. Maybe amenities or something that, uh, I'm not sure that's what they're talking about. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. How competitive is the project in terms of quality and price? Um, it's going to be extremely high quality when compared to, to the adjacent apartments and apartments in the area. So I think uh, where Paul had the estimate on that, I think it was a dollar fifty-two uh, price per foot for rents. Um, the average right now is a dollar forty-nine to around a dollar seventy-five. I think um, is what was on that uh, that slide. So I feel that's a very conservative number because the quality of the product and being new when compared to you know the neighboring properties. Um, it's going to be, I think, a superior product with a two-car garage where the apartments have no garage. Um, just the finish out is going to be a nicer finish out. So we're excited about the, this project. Will there be <clears throat> any accelerated depreciation to take advantage of with this product? I think we probably need to get back to you on that. Unless you know, Paul. Uh, no, we we get back to them on that question. Yeah, we'll get back. To, we'll we'll talk to our. I, I would think that would be a good idea. Although by the time that these are done, it may not be that great of a deal. The accelerated depreciation, well, at least the bonus depreciation depreciation may be gone. But we don't really know what the tax law will be in a couple of years when these are built and and ready to rent. They have to be put into service. So we hope so. We hope that the tax benefits are fabulous then. Uh, but it is a, a flow through entity. So there will be some tax benefits, but always speak with your CPA and, and we'll maybe bring on a CPA that can um, spell it out for people. We're just not supposed to talk taxes. Okay. Um, okay. I think, let's see. Right. Land deal, for land deal closing, anything required by the local community government? Oh, is there anything required by the government to enhance the property and future maintenance of those improvements obligated to the developer? No, there's nothing that we're having to do. Everything's already in place as far as uh, for us to develop the property, everything's in place. We've already you know, accomplished that with our due diligence. And there's no requirements by city or county that would require us to do any type of, you know, sometimes sometimes some developments, maybe we have to put in a road or something like that. Um, this situation, there's no requirements at all that we need to do. Yep. Okay, well, we are at the hour. So if you have more questions, just send them over to syndications at Real Wealth. We'll also do another webinar, follow-up webinar to answer questions that come in after you've read the documents. So with that, we will wrap it up. Clay, thank you so much for being here. Paul, thank you. And thank you all for joining us today. We'll look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you. Thanks.